Hello everyone, welcome to AI Guy channel. This is Akash Gingwar and today we will be starting with Limits Lecture 1. So let's look at question of the day 12. Take a screenshot for the same. Now let's try to understand why do we need to understand limits. So I'll take a practical example first. You all must have seen that uh, whenever there is an arrangement is set up in India, at least in India, uh, we try to inquire about the person, about the concerned person uh, with the help of societies, friends of friends and many other sources, right? Now, why do we do that? Because we actually want to inquire about a person and we also want to know about the person with the help of its vicinity. So basically how their friends are, how, what kind of society they live in. So basically we try to uh, portray one image of a particular person, the concerned person with the help of the external or the vicinity things, right? The things which are available in vicinity. Now let's try to understand this with the help of a mathematical example. Consider this function f x equals to x square by x. Now usually, usually when we know that x is not equal to zero, we can directly write this as f x equals to x. Here x is not equal to zero. So that is a given thing, right? But when we know, we don't know that, when we know that x equals to zero, we cannot really cancel this function. It should stay as it is. Now what still we want to identify or we want to know what kind of value this function would have possessed uh, if x was zero or x was near to zero. So basically we are trying to find a limiting value when x is approaching zero. So for that, let's look at it with the help of an example or a graph. Now let's break this function into two parts. This is equals to x for x not equals to zero. And this is equals to x square by x for x equals to zero. Now let me try to plot it like this. Now why open circle over here? Because at x equals to zero, this function is not defined, right? Now let's take this value as one and this value as minus one. Now I know that this is y equals to one because for f x for x not equals to zero, f x equals to x, and similarly this is minus one. Now if I go if I go closer, this will be half probably, and this will be minus half, right? Again we can see that as we go closer to this zone, the values of as the values of x are decreasing, the values of y also decreasing, right? Now if we go very close, let's say over here, so let's say this value is 0 0.000001. In that case, y would be 0 0.00001, right? Because y equals to x. Now we know that we are going as close as possible near the zero. And we still know that this function uh, is more or less equal to zero, almost equal to zero, right? We can say that. So that is the limiting value. As we go closer, uh, towards the vicinity point, we can find the value around that point or maybe exactly at the point if the function was defined, right? If a function is not defined, so we cannot say that this value y equals to zero would be defined over here, but just, just outside this point, just near the vicinity of this point, we can say that uh, this value is almost close to zero. So that is how limits are being defined. So I'm just giving a refresher of uh, this limiting concept because uh, many of you would have forgotten that. So most of us already knew have studied this in the 11th or 12th class, right? Now we know that why, why are we not able to cancel at x equals to zero because uh, at x equals to zero, it's not defined, it's not in domain. So basically the function is not defined, so we cannot cancel it. So for x equals to zero, this function stays as it is. Now let us try to understand how to define limits mathematically. So for that, we need to understand the concepts of LHL, RHL, right? So I call left hand limit as LHL, right hand limit as RHL. Now let's take the same example again, y equals to x square by x. So this is our function. This is our point zero where the function is not defined. Now I want to find the limiting value near this function. So near this point, sorry. Uh, so just, just near zero, approaching zero. So basically when I look at the right side over here, somewhere over here, this is plus 0 0.000001. And if I look at this point, so this one is minus 0 0000001, right? So when I'm looking at the right side, this is called right hand limit. When, I, when I'm approaching from the right side, this is right hand limit. When I'm, when I'm approaching from the left hand side, this is called left hand limit, as simple as that. So left side, left, left hand limit, right hand side, right hand limit. Now one more thing, uh, when, I, when we are defining the limit, so basically LHL should be RHL and that should be equal to some finite number. It shouldn't be infinite number. Let's say uh, if I'm talking about y equals to e power x, if I'm talking about this function and I'm writing uh, limit x approaches infinity e raised to x. 
and in that case limit is not defined because this is approaching infinite this is not a finite number this is approaching infinity in that case limit is not defined so whenever we are defining limits lhl should be equals to rhl equals to some finite number only in that case we can say that limit limit exists now let's take few examples so this is a uh, greatest major function this is gif right now what this function does is it will take the value just left of the x so basically let's say we have a function x equals to 2.3 this is a constant function if i am trying to calculate gif of this function i will get 2 so basically an integer just lesser than this one this one so in case of x equals to minus 3.2 let's say in that case this would be minus minus 4 sorry minus 4 right it cannot be minus 2 because minus 2 is greater than this one we have to find the greatest integer lesser than x so in that case this will be minus 4 Now let's try to find the limit of this function. So at x equals to zero, we know that uh, we have to approach from both the sides. Let's approach from left hand side. In case of left hand side, let's put value of x equals to zero minus zero point zero 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 one. So the greatest integer lesser than this one is minus one, right? So left hand limit comes out to be minus one. In case of RHL. Let's take r x equals to zero point zero 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 one. Then this would be zero, right? Because greatest integer lesser than this one is zero only. So r h l comes out to be zero. So here l h l is not equals to r h l. Although they both are finite, but they are not equal. So limit doesn't exist, right? If you know the graph of uh, G I F, then you can easily see that it looks like this one. So This one, it looks like this one, right? So you can see that at x equals to zero, if we are, if we are going towards the right hand side, then we we get zero. We go towards the left hand side, we get minus one, right? Now let's take one more similar example. So this is again similar kind of example. L H L over here would be sine of minus one, right? Because Uh, this gif of x in the left hand side that would be minus one so that, that becomes sine of minus one and rhl would be sine of zero we got the same values from here as well right so again these are these two are not equal so limit doesn't exist now let us look at another example this says limit x approaches one gif of x divided by x now before starting solving this question i will define one uh, term called h so h is nothing that is a very small number but is a positive number so h is infinitesimally small number 0.0000000000 you can go on writing that in place of one over there so this is how this function is this uh, number is being defined so h is a very small number right so why i'm doing that from now onwards I'll, rather than writing 0.001 i'll just write h or minus h so this is a negative number for left hand limit and this is a positive number for right hand limit right now let's try to do this one so lhl would be gif of 1 minus h divided by 1 minus h rhl would be gif of 1 plus h divided by 1 plus h now we know that this is exact zero because h is a positive number when we are subtracting any positive number from one very small positive number from one that uh, in that case it would become uh, 0.999 something like that right so gif of that would become zero So that would be zero minus one plus that is zero. In this case, that would be one because it's one plus something. So basically, G I F of that would be one, and divide by one plus H. So that would be one. H is very small, so we can approximately write it as one. So whenever we are writing the limits, so we have to ignore this H in the final calculation. So that is all. It, it comes out to be one. So again, these are not equal. So limit doesn't exist. Now let's look at indeterminate forms. So uh, until now, we just saw few examples which are which are very basic. now let's try to look at uh, different types of indeterminate forms when do we have to actually calculate the limits so basically the first two forms are 0 by 0 and infinity by infinity so let's let's say uh, you are dividing very small numbers you are dividing two very small numbers in that case you might get some finite value you, again you it's also possibility that you can get some infinite or zero value but there is also possibility that when we are dividing two finite numbers or two infinite numbers uh, there is a possibility that we might get some finite value right similarly for Zero into infinity. This is again nothing but zero into one by zero, right? So this is nothing but infinity. So uh, it's a alternative form of this one, similar one. Now infinity minus infinity. Again, this one is infinity one minus uh, one. Again, this is infinity into zero form. 
more or less similar like that. We tend to convert both these forms into this one only eventually, but you can get an idea that this is nothing but uh, zero by zero or infinity by infinity, more or less similar. Now this one is tricky, zero uh, zero by zero. For the rest of the ones, we can get a notion. Okay, how how can we define? Uh, how can we actually get a finite number over here? But in case of zero raised power zero or infinity raised power zero or one raised power infinity, it's uh, a little difficult to get the intuition. So let's try to look at those. Now let's look at zero raised power zero ones. Now we know that. Let let's take example. Let's say we have a value two. Now when when I'm doing two raised power two, when I'm doing two raised power three, two raised power four, we can see that when I'm increasing power. The value is value is increasing, right? Values are increasing. When I'm when I'm increasing power, values are increasing. Now let's take 0.5. Now I do same thing. 0.5 is for 2. 0.5 is for 4. Now I can see that with the powers increasing, values are decreasing actually. So I'll have to do reverse, right? So what I'll do, I'll I'll do 1 by 2 over here, 1 by 4 over here. Now I can see that with powers decreasing, I can see that values are also increasing. Now What if I try to do? I try to decrease this as much as possible. Let's let's make it as close to zero, zero point zero 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 one. Now I'll I'll try to write this one as one by zero 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 one. Sorry, not this one. One by thousand, maybe ten thousand. Okay. So when I'm when I'm doing this kind of stuff, so basically this is close to zero and this is also close to zero. But we can definitely say that this is a finite number because as we are decreasing the power. As we are decreasing the number, and also we are de decreasing the power, we can say that the value is increasing, or value may be some finite number. So that is how we can see that this gives us, this yields us some finite number, right? Now, how to get an idea for this one? Infinity raised to power zero. Now. Now you should note that these zero and zero are these are not exact zeros. Otherwise, it would have been very straightforward. Anything raised power zero is exact zero, right? Anything raised power one, exact one. Anything raised power exact one is one only. So these are not exact numbers. These are approximate numbers. So this is not zero. This is zero 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 point zero 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 something something like, something of that sort, right? So now when we are talking about infinity raised power zero, so what is happening? We know that anything raised power zero is one, exactly one, right? But let's say uh, we try to get a very big number. And this is not uh, exactly zero. Let's say we have this number, and I, if I write zero point zero 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 one, then probably, then probably this won't be one number. One, this won't be one, right? If it was exactly zero, then this is definitely one. But if it's it's something 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 very small, but not exactly zero, then probably this is something bigger than one, right? So that's why this is an indeterminate form. Now same story over here. One is for infinity. Now we know that anything raised for exact one is one only. Now when we are writing one point zero 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 one something of that sort and writing a very big number, let's say ten to twenty three or twenty five, in that case this might be a bigger number than one, but still a finite number because the decimals are very small. Right? It is similar to that uh, infinite series. Let's try to sum uh, do the summations. One plus one by two plus one by four plus one by eight till infinity. We know that we are adding infinite times, but still we are getting a finite number of infinite AP sum, summation of AP. So you can understand this one as this only. All right. Now let us try to understand the first two indeterminate forms, zero by zero and infinity by infinity. So consider this function y equals to x square by x, the one which we saw earlier, right? So when I am defining limit x approaches zero, x square by x. Now we know that when x approaches zero, this is also zero. And this is also zero, closing close to zero, not not exactly zero. When this is approaching zero, this is also approaching zero. This is also approaching zero. So this is the kind of form which we are looking for, right? Similarly for infinity. Now let us try to understand the three methods of solving this kind of forms: zero by zero and infinity by infinity. So the first one is rationalization, second is factorization, third one is logical rule. Now rationalization is nothing but the penultimate part of factorization. So basically, this will eventually lead to this only. Uh, we do rationalization so that we can get get the factors out and we can cancel out the stuff. So this is the in most of the cases this is the penultimate part of factorization. Lopatel is a different rule. It involves differentiation and it's only applicable in this kind of form. Now let's look uh, let's look at few examples. So we have x cube minus one divided by x square minus one. So I can clearly see that I have to factorize this one, right? So that would give me x minus one, x square plus one plus 
x divided by x plus 1 x minus 1 now i can clearly see that this was the factor in the numerator this was the factor in the numerator which was creating the zero part so basically this is a positive part this is a positive part when x x is approaching 1 only this factor and this factor was the one which was creating the zero part so when i cancel this out now we know that we can cancel why because x is approaching to 1 x is not equal to 1 so if x is what if x was equal to 1 exact 1 in that case we would have cancelled right because x is approaching 1 we can cancel that stuff now we can clearly see that this is not a uh, not a indeterminate form it's a simple equation where we can put just 1 so that becomes x square plus 1 plus x divided by x plus 1 so this this comes out to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is 3 and this is 2 so 3 by 2 is the correct answer now you might be confused that why i didn't do uh, 1 plus 1 plus h or 1 minus h now try to do this over here so you are doing doing it 1 plus h whole square plus 1 plus 1 plus h now eventually h is a very small number and these are very big numbers as compared to h h is infinitesimally small number so it will give h square plus 2h right so as compared to 3 we'll get some some h or h square so that is a very small number we can neglect it right so that's why i've written directly so from now on i'll write it directly i won't be doing this kind of stuff in these kind of examples from the, in the basic ones we have to do that uh, like in case of gi function in case of fraction part of function we can do that we have to do that but to understand the process to basically get the intuition but in case of these kind of examples we can directly write, the, uh, write it like this now let's look at this example 1 plus log x minus x divided by 1 minus 2x plus x square now limit x approaches 1 now I can clearly see that I cannot do anything over here. I cannot do factorize, I cannot do rationalization, I, I can do I cannot do anything over here. So the only method which is there for me is log there. Now before that, the first habit you should develop is checking the form. As 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 soon as you get the question, you, you see the equation, you have to uh, apply the form. So basically you have to check the form. So here x is approaching 1. So we'll get 1 plus log 1 is nothing but 0 minus 1 divided by 1 minus 2 plus 1. So that is 0 by 0, right? So we can see that this is 0 by 0 form before applying L'Hopital. Now L'Hopital rule says that whenever we are getting a form of this kind, this side, 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity, we can directly differentiate the numerator, we can directly differentiate the denominator individually, not, not in conjunction, but individually. So now let us try to differentiate the numerator. We'll get 0 plus 1 by x, 1 by x is the differentiation of log x minus 1 divided by 0 minus 2 plus 2x. Again, limit x approaches 1. Now again, if we try to put it over here, we can see that uh, this again becomes 0 and this again becomes 0. So we'll differentiate it once again. You can see that now. Uh, this is 1 minus 1, 0. And over here, this is 1 minus 2 plus 2. That is again 0. So 0 by 0 again. So we'll have to apply the uh, L'Hopital rule once again. Or, or else we can do factorization as well. So let's try to do factorization this time. So th that will give me 1 minus x divided by x times. This will become minus of uh, 1 minus x, right? So this gets cancelled. This is minus 1 by x. So this is nothing but minus 1. So the limit comes out to be minus 1. So you can do it in, in, in any manner. So you can continue with the differenti differentiation part over here or L'Hopital part over here. Or you can do with the factorization. So I chose the factorization one and you can choose any, any of these methods. Now let us try to solve this example. Under root 2 plus x minus root 2 divided by x, limit x approaches 0. Now, as mentioned earlier, uh, whenever I see something of this sort, root a plus root b or a plus root b, something uh, something of this sort, then the first thought that triggers in my mind is rationalization, right? So let's try to do the same. Root 2 plus x minus root 2 divided by x. Root 2 plus x plus root 2 divided by root 2 plus x plus root 2. Now let's multiply this one limit x approaches 0. So we'll get 2 plus x over here, minus 2 divided by x times root, uh, root, sorry, under root 2 plus x plus root 2, right? Now here, 2 gets cancelled, x gets cancelled, we'll get 1 upon under root 2 plus x plus root 2, right? So now we can clearly put x equals to 0. So if I put x equals to 0, we'll get 1 upon 2 root 2. So this is our limit value. 
you could have also done with the help of L'Hopital rule, differentiating the numerator, differentiating the de denominator, and you'll get the same result, right? Now let us try to understand the binomial approximation and its application. So basically in case of limits, binomial approximation has various advantages and various applications actually. So the definition says that one plus X raised to the power n equals to roughly equals to one plus NX. We cannot see that it's exactly equals to, it's roughly equals to one plus NX. Here limit X tends to zero. Only in this case, whenever we have something over here that tends to zero, in that case, we apply, we can apply this approximation. Then how do we find this one? How did how do we derive this one? So we know that one plus x raised to the power n. If we do the binomial expansion over here, we'll get n c zero dot x raised to the power zero plus n c one dot x power one, n c two dot x square till n c n dot x raised to the power n. Right. Now the first term is one times one. The second term is n times x. Similarly, third term is n n minus one divided by two factorial dot x square dot dot dot. Right. Now we know that x is approaching zero, so we can avoid the higher terms because if x is let's say let's say x is ten to the power minus twenty five. Let's say then x square would be ten to the power minus fifty. X cube would be ten to the power minus seventy five. Right. So you can see that these terms, these higher higher degree terms, are very smaller as compared to x. So we can avoid that. We can ignore ignore those terms. So one plus n x is the answer, right? So we can write in case x approaches zero or anything over here which approaches zero. It it might not be x. It might be something else. Let's say if it is one plus two x and over two x and over here two x approaches zero. In that case, this also will be applicable. So that is how we can do that. Now let's look at first application of binomial approximation. So we'll understand one particular theorem. It says x raised to power n minus a raised to power n divided by x minus a limit x tends to a. This is equals to n a raised to power n minus one. Now how do we solve it with the help of binomial theorem, binomial approximation? So what I'll do, I'll write x raised to power n as a plus x minus a times n. So basically, I added one a and subtracted one a, and wrote the similar thing. Let's solve the numerator first, right? Now what I'll do, I'll take a raised to the power n as common. I'll get one plus x minus a divided by a raised to the power n minus a raised to the power n. So this is nothing but this is uh, x minus a is approaching zero divided by a is also approaching zero. So basically, this particular term is approaching zero. So what I told that one plus anything, anything which approaches zero raised to the power n is nothing but one. One plus n x, right? This is x. So we can apply the similar over here. So what we'll get over here, a raised to the power n, one plus n times x minus a divided by a minus a raised to the power n. So this will become a raised to the power n plus a raised to the power n dot n x minus a minus a raised to the power n. So this this gets cancelled. So this was this is our numerator. Now de denominator is this one. A raised to the power n dot n x minus a divided by a times x minus a. So this gets cancelled, and this also gets cancelled. So it comes out to be a raised to the power n minus one dot n. You can also solve this with the help of L'Hopital. That would be more easier. You just differentiate it once, differentiate it once, and you'll get the same result. But this is just to get an idea how to use the binomial approximation. So we have to sometimes we have to convert the inside things. Uh, in this format, so basically it was not written in this particular format, but I had to create in this particular format to apply the binomial approximation. Sometimes it would be visibly clear. Sometimes we'll have to do some kind of uh, adjustments. So today's lecture was still here only. In the second lecture of limits, we'll be studying two more indeterminate forms. Uh, so let's meet for the next lecture. Thanks for watching.